for Mary, Virginia Woolf, and the Bloomsbury Group embodied values which she shared, an integration of art, of culture, and politics which she applied to the Canadian context. I chose to support and encourage Canadian painting because this was an expression of our newfound independence of the mother country. We were young, and in spite of the depression in the 30s, we wanted a way to express our own voice. For me, it was through our painters. Mary used her wedding gift money to support artists and to buy the art which fed her soul. Buffering pain with beauty, she created a room of her own, an environment which nourished both her and her children. For an art collector, the Picture Loan Society was a treasure trove. Her old school friend Douglas Duncan started the society in 1936 to exhibit, sell and rent the work of contemporary Canadian artists. Whatever skill he lacked as a businessman, he made up for in panache and flair. While Mary wanted to be close to that bohemian world, she wasn't prepared to totally leave her own. April 5th, 1948. To the Secretary of the Women's Committee of the Art Gallery. I should like to propose Mrs. Harry Jackman as a member of the Women's Committee of the Art Gallery for the following reasons. She is a university graduate, BA. She is interested in painting and sculpture and is acquiring a collection of contemporary Canadian art. A great many of the artists are her personal friends and she shows her interest in the gallery by attending virtually all the openings and a great many of our lectures. The building of women's committees of the Art Gallery of Ontario and such things, the other cultural institutions in Canada, is a result of women not being allowed to work. They had ambition, they had drive, they had talent, they had creativity, and society wouldn't let them work if they were married. And so they drove them into these expressions, these usually cultural expressions. Um, and that's what Mother did. When there'd be an opening in Toronto, uh, an artist's opening, she would simply, she'd go there, be the first at the door, and she would walk around and look at the, carefully at the paintings, and if one appealed to her, she'd say, I'll take that one. She was in a position, fortunately, to be able to do it. But her collection was built on this intensive interest, so she did not miss the chance to get the painting that she wanted. She would come looking for something for a specific purpose. And she was always very uh, definite in what she liked. I can hear her saying, uh, well, I like that one, you know. Very decided in her views. And once, I do remember, uh, she chose something for a wedding present for, for somebody or other, and I said, well, Mary, they mayn't like it. And she said, well, they can learn to, which I thought was a great idea from an artist's point of view. <laughs> Mother, of course, bought a lot of art, a lot of abstract art, including these mobiles, things that hang from the ceiling up there, you know, and all this sort of fancy stuff. <laughs> and we would sort of mock her, say, what is this, Mother? You know, this funny, funny thing, she said, don't touch, don't touch, it's very, very precious. And some of it was very delicate. But, uh, you know, that was her passion, life, you know, art. When she came back from New York with a Ben Nicholson abstract drawing, um, father just, I think she paid $250 in, I guess, um, the late 50s for this. Uh, my father just blew a stack, grabbed the picture out of my mother's uh, arms, marched over to her mother's, Nell Rowell's, and said, look, look what your daughter's bought. How could she waste her money like these? A few pencil lines on a, on a piece of paper. And she was a good art purchaser. She would buy the, these things that father thought were junk, and then, you know, 20 years later, he'd, he'd sell them or he'd give them away, and he'd get a huge tax receipt. He could write off other income. <laughs> 
The other interesting thing about mother was the, uh, her encouraging father to purchase this cottage in Georgian Bay. And this cottage was originally owned by Dr. James McCallum, a sponsor of the early Group of Seven, before they became the Group of Seven. One year, in 1913, 14, uh, as a winter work project for these artists, uh, McCallum and McDonald planned to put murals all around the living room in the cottage. And Mother recognized the value, the historic value, of these murals done in the beginning of the 1900s. And she encouraged Father to, to uh, buy the cottage. And Father wasn't sure he wanted it. It had been empty for three or four years and wasn't in very good shape, and the roof was leaking. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were renting at a cottage next door, and Father said, Eric, why don't we swim around the island and take a look at it from the shoreline? So we, you know, from the water line. So we swam all the way around it. The two islands that comprised the group were over 30 acres. And so we swam around that. And he was so proud of his accomplishment, he said, I think we should buy it as a tribute to what we've done. So mother got her paintings. And this was in 1949. And then in 1967, uh, mother and father gave the art to the National Gallery, and there's now a gallery room called the McCallum Jackman Cottage Gallery. It says so much about Mary's values that she gave to the Canadian public the art that she loved. Collector and friend Bobby Hyde challenged Mary to support artists in a direct way. Having artists stay with you at Go Home Bay is the most useful thing you can do. Give them good food, a good bed, and some kindness. And then you may create an atmosphere where they can work. And uh, she befriended A.Y. Jackson, who came up many years. He was a great friend of the family, a great raconteur, if there was one, mm -hmm. stories galore. So we all loved A.Y. Jackson. Charles Comfort, who was an artist and you know, past director of the National Gallery in Ottawa, he and his wife Louise were up every summer. Uh, Will Ogilvy and his wife were up a lot of summers. Uh, Jack Nichols, I can remember, uh, who used to come up and sit and had a mandolin, and he would sit there and he'd strum it on the porch with the sun going down. It was just, it's just wonderful. The thing to do was always to have a painting picnic. So we all got our gear together. We got it all into the boat and we went out to a very beautiful island on the outer side of the bay with lots of beautiful trees and gorgeous rock. We didn't talk, we separated and did our stuff by ourselves. And then we came back and looked at everybody's work and made complimentary motions about it all. And then we ate out in the sun, the hot sun and the fresh air and the wind. And it was just absolutely lovely. They'd all be there together sometimes. And they'd go out in rowboats and canoes in the morning, come back in the evening with their oils done. They'd put them up against a screen uh, to dry off, and we'd have an art show, a ready-made art, <laughs> every evening. We had a lot of fun up there at the cottage. Mom and Dad had a wonderful time, and had great friends. And of course, that's the time when all of us kids were up there and saw them 24 hours a day, and it was very special for all of us. And, and we all got along really well. <laughs> 